We drafted Goga. Um, to be honest with you, I'm sitting here and I can't believe that he got to 18. We had him really high on our board. We had him really high on our board. And as we look at our team and, and move forward, you know, everybody says, well, you know, it's another center. Uh, but the way we look at it is, um, you know, Sabonis is going to play a lot of four and Miles can play a lot of four. And uh, he fits us perfectly in terms of his shot blocking. I think that's one of the things that impressed us the most on Goga as uh, we watched a lot of film. We saw him live. I think uh, Chad saw him live. I saw him live. Um, we, we, we looked at uh, the stats as well and some of our analytics, and he's been the best Euro player since Doncic. Now Doncic is you know, a rookie, but in the last four or five years, his stats are up there with uh, some of the best players. And so we felt like his shot blocking was really important. That's something that um, we base our defense. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm really surprised. We didn't think that he'd be there at 18. And so we're pretty excited. Uh, there were some other things that happened, but uh, I don't think I can quite <laughs> talk about it yet. Uh, and the one thing I can tell you is we traded 50 uh, for a future second. And um, so with that, any? Any questions? Um, I think it's reported he traded 50 for three future second round picks. Was that no, correct? No, no. We traded 50 for one future uh, second. But uh, we, you know, there's there's other things out there that we're, we'll talk about. Well, I'm different. sorry. I think it's reported you traded 32. Oh, we can't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. So you traded 50 for a future second. Yeah, I think we, we acquired a, quite a few few things and <laughs> I can't be as generic as that can I no. is that gonna get me fined but there's um but can you say which year the... we, we we got one player uh in the draft uh Goga and um and then we we acquired some second round picks that's okay. that's probably about that, as far as I can talk right now uh Utah um I guess with Goga People, you know, you kind of alluded to it. You yeah. already have two centers on your roster. What I kind of role do you do, see though. for him? Is he can he step in and be a rotational player uh, as a twenty-year-old next season? Or? I don't think there's any doubt that he can play next year. I mean, what you have to understand is the league that he plays on in, and then also the Euro League is a league of men. That is a no joke league. I played over overseas for a few years. Uh, it's better than a G League. It's uh, it's a higher level uh, across the board than a, a good college team, and he's getting it done against high level uh, uh, players, high level adults. And one of the things we've known from you know drafting in the past and my previous uh, places that if they've played well in those leagues, it really translates, and especially rebounding and shot blocking. And I. You know, he's, he's becoming a better shooter. I think he's going to be a, a good roll guy. I think he's going to be a good dive guy. Uh, he's got really good hands. Uh, some people think he's a little like Vucevic, but I think he plays more above the rim. Um, I think he's his own player. And some of the things we, we value is toughness. And he's, he's going to come in and he's going to compete. And he's really long. Um, he affects the game above the rim. And... You know, when we when we set our defense, if, if you ask Dan Burke, the, the number one thing is a shot blocker. And so we, we valued that. We really value that. And if you roster maneuver us and look at Domas at the four, that gives us a lot of opportunity to play Goga at the back of five. So Kevin over here. So yeah. you, you believe Miles, Domas, Goga – there's minutes for all three of them. You I don't do. have to move one of them. I do. I mean, look, Goga's got to come in and and earn the minutes. We don't we don't give young players. You look at the draft last year, and not many players come in and play and affect a playoff team. Some some players play, but it's not at a playoff level. But this kid's different because he's been playing since he's 16 years old at a at a high level professional team. I remember drafting Tony Parker at San Antonio and. He was more polished and ready because he's been playing against, you know, um, 
players at a, uh, a, a young age. Uh, Nicholas Batum was the same thing. We drafted him in Portland, and we didn't think he would be ready, and he came in and started his rookie year. So I, I think that, uh, that Goga can play early. Kevin, does this move show that you are now fully committed to playing Miles and Domas together? Well, uh, I would say this, that we get really excited about the draft, and where you really get the players is in free agency. So we wanted to make a good pick. Uh, I wanted to have a little bit of roster balance. This, this moves Domas or Miles over to the four a little bit more. Um, but I don't think that eliminates us from going after a, a four in free agency. I think, I think uh, we'll look at that, um, but we'll also look at some guards in free agency too. I mean, we've, we've got a lot of holes to fill. fill. Uh, we're going to have a lot of money to go out into the marketplace, um, but we do have uh, a lot of our core coming back. But, you know, July 1 is going to be where the real dirty work starts for us. We, we've got to – We've got to make some hay in free agency. Kevin, uh, avoiding specifics about uh, assets acquired today, but more philosophical-oriented question, how do you evaluate keeping picks against trading them away? I'm sure it's somewhat case-by-case -case basis, but it, is there it, it really is. And we came into this draft wanting to draft a player and then look at accumulating some assets for the future. And uh, I think we did that. I think uh, we did that in actually in a big way. And a lot of times what happens is uh, that asset, you think it's a draft pick, but really it's a draft pick that could be used for a player, a veteran. It doesn't always have to be for a draft. And if you can accumulate enough, then you can, you can, do, you can have packages. And so our space becomes very valuable. You can look at taking in a player into space and giving up a draft pick. And, you know, when you have multiple seconds or multiple firsts, uh, the level of player that you can look at is completely different. And that was really important for us because, you know, we've the last two years have, have overachieved and we've made the playoffs, um, but we've got a lot of holes to fill. I mean, we've got a, a point guard. We've you know, we've got a three, we've got a starting four. And so what we're trying to do is balance having some youth that can play a little bit um, and, and, and we can develop, but also bring in some players that can help us win right now. Our goal won't change. We'll, we'll try to be a, a good team next year. We're not going to, you know, go young and try to really uh, start at the bo bottom. Um, we we want to win again next year. And, you know, with Victor's injury, uh, he might be out a little bit. I know you guys have uh, uh, seen and read. Um, I'm hopeful that he's going to be back in uh, December, January. But to put a true timeline is not really fair. Uh, but we want to be good. So we're going to be active in free agency. And that's where you can get, get guys that can step in and, and have a, a, a quick impact. I will say this about Goga. Uh, of any of the guys I've drafted or we've drafted in the last few years, I think he's more polished and ready to play in an NBA game than a normal kid coming out of um, uh, college or you know many years ago to high school. You mentioned last time you spoke you wanted to find out more info about Victor to maybe shape your decision. If at all, did it impact what you did tonight in terms of future versus not, present? It didn't impact tonight. You know, tonight is about you know trying to get someone that can move the needle either short term but specifically long term you know I wanted somebody that potentially you know could grow into a bigger big role because look at the end of the day you know we have three or four ways of acquiring talent you know you can draft you can trade you can uh, sign or you can uh, develop and we take a lot of pride in drafting and developing and so today's an important day uh, to get a guy that we feel like can, can be, be be special down the line you mentioned uh, Sabonis and Miles Turner. What what does this move move mean in terms of the possibility of re-signing Thaddeus Young? Well, Thad meant, has meant a lot to us the last couple of years. I don't think it rules him out. Um, uh, but you know, the thing about that is he's an unrestricted free agent. It's his choice, and we'll have conversations. But at the end of the day, 
you know, it'll be his choice. But we'll have we'll have conversations with him. Kevin, where are you with Bogdanovich? Do you think you'll be able to to retain him? He's important for us. Um, on July first, you know, we got a few calls that we're going to have to make at midnight. I think they now changed the rule. Thank God um, that you can call it. You know the but but he'll be a he, he'll be a priority. You you, you don't know. Uh, I, I would say this. Um, I think there's going to be some high competition for him. I think the way he ended the year kind of took the load offensively for us. The league has gone such an offensive league in scoring and shooting, um, specifically with his size. He's going to have some offers, but we're going to do our best to keep him. How are you approaching the point guard situation with, uh, I know you have Holiday, obviously. Right. Um, any chance that Collison comes back? And if not, how do you approach that situation? Uh, I mean, there's a chance. Uh, you know, the truth is you don't even know until you start talking July 1. Uh, I think I think Darren had a good, um, a good run here for two years. I think he's shown that he's still a starter. Um, but just like Thad and Boyan and Corey, they all had really good years last year. And uh, they're going to have options. And it becomes... You know, for us, I, I don't know if I've ever been a part of a team that's had so many free agency and so much, uh, uh, you know, room to go after players. But yet, when you look at the room and you say, well, yeah, you got $43 million, but now a, a max contract's $32 million. You know, you think it's a lot, but boy, it can go pretty quickly. So what we try to do is we try to plug and play what we know, and we try to get those players – uh, and take out the, some of the unknowns and stick them in and then, and then keep trying to build. And, you know, I, I've never been a part of anything that's been this complex because, you know, we draft. Uh, and one of the things I didn't want to do is add a bunch of players in the draft to take away our possibilities to, to acquire players in uh, free agency. Because I wanted to get really one player who I felt could impact the team next year. And... Um, I think Goga is is perfect for us. I think Goga down the line could be much more than a backup. Uh, you know, he affected the game, a really high level game, um, last year as a you know 19 year old. Well, one last thing, I, I think a lot of us still think you're going to make a move with one of your th three centers. Can you say with certainty that when the season starts? All three of these big guys will still be. I don't with think the team. you can say for certainty anything in this business. You know, uh, the, there's always that saying. I mean, amongst uh, general managers, there's one player that can't be traded, and that's the best player in the league. And then, you know, I, it, it's it's becoming uh, even crazier because of the shorter term contracts, and that uh, the turnover is going to happen more and more. And I think we have to be prepared prepared I tell the management team just like tonight we had to call, call a little bit of an audible because uh, we didn't see we, we in any mock draft that we had look we had uh, Goga in our top 10 and I just I didn't see but what happened it's a butterfly effect I, I knew for a fact that there was one team above us that was going to take him but one thing happened and it caused a butterfly effect for the whole draft uh, in free agency, I think we always have to be willing to be aggressive. We have to uh, be able to call audibles and be be quick to take advantage of a marketplace. I don't know whether that's July 1 or July 4th or it's a big contract or a bunch of uh, uh, good, solid players that we put out there and let our young guys grow. It's something I think we just have to be very open to see what happens in the marketplace. Kevin, going into July, where's your level of confidence that you guys can acquire an all-star caliber player? I can tell you July 3rd or 4th a lot better than I can before I have a chance to talk with those guys. Again, one of the things we, we, we feel like we pride ourselves in is we don't necessarily, um, how do I say this, just because you're all-star doesn't mean it's the right person. You know, you get you become an all-star and then, uh, that usually means he's a good player, but sometimes it doesn't fit with us. Um, we'll be active after some names, but uh, 
like I said, if, if, if you, you're after a max guy and you have $43 million and you've got three or four open spots, if you give a max contract to that guy, what are you going to be doing with the rest of your roster? So um, I think our tendency will be to look at really good, solid players at, at good levels too. Whether that's a, an all-star, I don't know yet. I, I, it's probably too early.